I've been working on my retro game and Pokemon collection for over 10 years, and it's finally to the point where these two rooms at the top of my barn are to the point where I'm happy with them, and I'm super excited. We've added a ton of stuff, we've implemented a bunch of new things, and I wanna take a deep dive into both rooms and show you guys everything that's going on. And also, we just got this sign, and I am so stoked about it. Small Town Laser Creations. This is an acrylic sign. They do that custom, and they do a lot of other things. Incredible business, great service, great people, and very incredibly kind of them to send this legendary Caterpie sign. But while we're here, you might notice all these SNES games. We have a ton of NES games as well. April 12th, we're gonna have one of our biggest auctions ever over on Whatnot. We're giving away two Switches, beautiful Switches right here. The Zelda one is my favorite design of all time, but we're also giving away three Super Nintendos, two NESs, and literally guys, it's gonna be hundreds of super high-end box SNES and NES games, so many heavies. It's gonna be unreal, so come and hang with us on WhatNot April 12th. It's gonna be a long day auction with epic giveaways a lot more than I mentioned here, so we'll see you there. So right now we're standing in the Pokemon room, and if you've ever watched a Pokemon Pursuit video on our channel, you know we've been focused on growing the Pokemon games, cards, and collectibles collection for a, quite a long time. We're gonna get to that, but we gotta start in the retro games first, and another area that I've been focusing on quite a lot is the handhelds. And Sky Guy's gonna be here with me because we looked at our video from last year, there were a lot of questions, a lot of things that you guys were wondering, so he's gonna feed some of those questions as they come up. But right here, guys, this is the handheld collection, and this has grown immensely. So we've added a ton of boxes. We got like, and the thing with Game Boy Colors is there's actually like a couple different style of boxes, which I just recently realized. You got the shiny, glossy letters, border, and then the white border. So I'm definitely gonna be working on getting more of these. And as game convention season is around the corner, it's gonna be a priority to fully complete it. But Game Boy has been instrumental for me from collecting since I was like probably five years old. This might be the exact color, the ice blue, that my brother and I got, or at least one of us got this one for road trips when we were little, cause we were like every kid. We needed something to keep us distracted on, on long road trips to Tennessee or wherever it might be. So that's a brand new version of that Game Boy Pocket and it's super special. I remember playing Mario Land 1 and 2, a little bit of Tetris on that thing. It's iconic. The Game Boy is stinking awesome. The handhelds are awesome. So before we go any further, like what's your overall goal with, with all of this? A lot of people ask like, are you going for every single handheld ever? Yeah. Are you going for just every Nintendo one? That's a like great what's your, question. What is your goal for what you currently have? I think I've pretty much settled in on, I, I do basically want to go for every US released handheld console by Nintendo. How deep I want to go with that, whether we're getting stuff like, I don't even know if this is official, but the ING Direct. I think it is. 2004 LA sales conference. There's some really weird like special ones that companies would commission mm -hmm. Nintendo for. So there's like limited to like 50 or 100 on some which we've seen a collection in the past that has had, had a lot quite of those. A few of that kind Couldn't of quite thing. seal a deal on it, but yeah, like I definitely want to start with like the released to retail. And then if I find good deals on stuff like that, I'll go there. But yeah, I want to get them all complete in the box as much as possible. I, I want to spread these out longer term so that you can actually see the front of the, all the detail in the box, just cause I love, it's so nostalgic to me. This one here, very, very special. The OG Red Game Boy Advance SP. I, I still think this is the greatest handheld of all time. I love this thing. I, I like it a lot too. I remember I had two, just the regular Game Boy Advances. I think I had the Indigo one, which, do I even, do you have, even that? have that? Snap, did you just find a hole in my collection? <laughs> I guess maybe. I've got maybe this I one, did. the Glacier, well, which a lot of people have. All had. I know is the screen on mine <laughs> melted, so I had to get another, but then the SP came out right after. So I got that one and it was instantly a st oh, <laughs> much, much absolute better. Absolute game changer. Yes. I mean, for the pocket and the Game Boy Color, like we had those little worm lights. Uh, that we we're always using. I think I've got one in here somewhere, yeah. just for, for old time's sake. All these boxes over here, these are ones that I need to complete. So with convention season coming around and like garage sale season, I'm definitely gonna be targeting these. I took a picture so we have it for when we go to conventions. This was one of my favorite scores at a garage sale that was on an ask. Unbelievably rare box right there with the outer box and then the interior box inside of it is absolutely mint. The, another part that's kind of an expansion is a lot of these like either just custom shells, multicolor put together or or just particularly rare. Do you want to collect some stuff that's not necessarily US? It has to be cool enough? Yeah, I mean, I have like this here, but um, I don't know. Like I, basically if, the de if I get a great deal, 
I'll keep it, but I'm not specifically targeting like European versions or Japanese versions right now. You never know. But like some of that stuff for Pokemon, which we'll get to, is super. Now Pokemon it's might super, be a different super story. Cool. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that so a little bit later. What are, what are your two favorite pieces out of all this? My two favorite pieces. I mean, if you if you're going for pure nostalgia and memories, it has to be this piece because it's what we it's what my brother and I started with. Kind of fun one that actually I did play through Leaf Green on mm-hmm. is the Game Boy Micro. Yes. Which right here, I, I, that's actually brand new in the box. It is the uh, 20th anniversary special edition. So I, I have a used one that I played through Leaf Green on and the screen is great, super bright. It's like a AGS 101 SP type of brightness, mm-hmm. but not very comfortable. I, ca- <laughs> it's, I it's still enjoy it. It's almost as bad as an NES controller. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just right. digs into yeah. your hands. Which, no knock on the NES c- controller, except we don't really like it. Yeah. So I guess, I guess we are, the, the, the dog bone uh, NES controller solved the problem, so did the SNES. And then real quick, can you just acknowledge these? Oh yeah, those are two earthbounds. Okay, cool. Thank you for moving, asking. Moving on. All right. <laughs> I, I will say, this earthbound right here, this is my original, uh, traded in for that at a, at a game store about, about an hour from here. Um, traded in five bins full of like garage sale games that I had net nothing into because I sold out everything else had profit and got that I think it was like 800 bucks at the time. I think it's a little more than that now like It's two, legendary two two times more maybe a little more than that over to this little SNES section mm-hmm. And I don't want to say little to undermine what it is, but yeah. this was your first console. Yeah, Super Nintendo right here This was it 50 bucks at Toys R Us on clearance late in the life of the console. So Super Mario World was like, really, I, the first game I really played was the OG Mario for NES, Mario Duck Hunt. But this was the first game that I dove into like at my house and absolutely love it. What a blessing that that was like one of my first games because it's still today is one of the greatest games of all time on many, many lists. And I completely agree, it's such a good game. For 2D Mario, if you haven't played it and you're into like that at all, that is where you should start. I stink and love that game. So, and this too, Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, so the consoles take up quite a bit of space. Do you want to go for every SNES box variant? I, you I have, don't think you so. You have five, but I don't know how many there are. I'm, I'm content, I'm content there, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I find great deals, I might keep them, but space is a factor. Um, GameCubes, yeah. on the other hand, I might, we'll talk about those in a second, but I might go for all of those. This was a new, newer edition, yes, and we're I'm still so gonna be adding these. it. So, uh, over on our website, caterpcrew.com, we actually have controller mounts, uh, lots of different mounts that we have for sale, in addition mm-hmm. to uh, some cool hats. Oh, we'll show those off. Yeah, we'll show those in yeah. just a sec. But we have Xbox controller uh, mounts right here, and then PlayStation controller mounts, and then these are my personal favorite. Oh, I stinking love the this. Switch. Control- I've so- dreamed of this for a long time. I want to get every Joy-Con, every region. There's no region lock on Switch, so I don't care. I want them all. Uh, just because of the color and how these can look with these Joy-Con mounts that that matte 3D printed. So those are on the website. And they're still too. accessible. Like take take them off. Real quick. Oh yeah. Like, you just have to like pull up on one. Bada bing, bada boom. They lock in real nice. We're very proud of those. That is a great design, man. That is satisfying. Yeah. You don't have to hit the button on the back. It just comes. Uh huh. Right and out. somebody said that they actually bought one just as a little replacement for their like hand thing because <laughs> it's a little closer together. <laughs> that's a little together. more skinny, yeah. yeah. There's a lot more Joy-Cons than that, but that's kind of just piecing together what I had from casually just keeping whatever I found. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, you have all of these, but you'd have to open up the console to get them out. Uh, right, which I don't really want to do. I do want to target these at, at conventions for sure because they just look so cool like that. I love it. Let me know what you guys think. Another mount that we have, we, we just got to point out real quick, is the N64. Yeah. These were featured in the last tour. But these N64 controller mounts are fantastic. Um, some highlights in this are the two DK64 controllers, but a new addition that is currently on display, and we're gonna get the Nintendo Power uh, on next to it. Yeah. But this is the Millennium 2000 controller. Uh, and this is actually in fantastic condition, incredibly rare. You might think there's only 2,000 of these co- controllers, but there's actually only 1,000. Yeah, Still and, don't you, know and why we've they had didn't three do. of them. Yes, right. we have. It's wild. So it's this this guy right here inside. There was a, well, there's cool Pokemon stuff in there. There it is right here. Oh, yeah. So inside of the cover, literally, is the subscribers only bonus issue giveaway. That's how you got this thing. Win one of 1,000. So you could enter, but it still was like a raffle. You still yep. weren't guaranteed. 
which explains the rarity of that thing. And there's a couple more. Look at, there's even like there's an insert for the Donkey Kong 64 controller, yeah. which I'm curious how many of those there are. If you know, let us it's know. It's more common than that one for sure. And yes. there's a couple controllers that are even more rare that I hope to uh, maybe put with that one someday. We'll see. I've got a couple hopeful leads on. On some of those, the then, Fantastics, I love those. And then we we mentioned it, but uh, oh yes, you gotta these, show them, baby. They're available for garage Check sales. That season. out, minty fresh. If you're new around here, that's one of our sayings. And these hats are comfy. So we have red, and then we have gray available. Yes, indeed. I'm just gonna wear this one the rest and of the time. And then you gotta mention the Caterpie Crew Necks. I'm just gonna open this up. Do it. So the Caterpie Crew Necks, one of the comfiest things. Everybody ever. that's ever bought one so far. There's so many people that are like, them. my wife stole mine. Yep. I, I have to They're get so another, or all my kids want one. My wife wore it yesterday. <laughs> Just like is Add a little Hawaiian flair to your life. Those yes. are on catapacoo.com. Go check them out, guys. Let's get back to the games. So the, the Switch collection is right here, which if you haven't noticed, some of the shelves are now black. We uh, My wife has been painting them. She is glorious. I love her. And she's been doing a great job. The entire Pokemon room is finished. So all the shelves out there are black. We've been slowly transitioning. Shout out to the Switch. It's hard to call it my favorite system of all time because I'm not sure yet, but I think it might be. For games like Breath of the Wild, memories attached to Breath of the Wild, playing with Brother Dave, who's filming right now, and he's not my real brother, and then playing with my actual brother, <laughs> Quinn, uh, and a couple other of our friends, just the hype when that game came out, the fun, the conversations. The community of gaming has always been my favorite part about it. Uh, I think that's true for you too, especially with online gaming and like. Just... I, I would say so. Community is what's kept me. I don't know if it's your absolute in... favorite part, but it's such an essential part. Oh, it is a very essential part. That's some of my best gaming moments, like you, have been with have been with friends. And I'm sure that's the same 100%. with everybody watching. Now, you'll also have to tell us your theories on when you think Nintendo is going to be releasing a. Uh... The Switch 2, the double Switch, the, the Switch Plus bonus, the <laughs> right. new Deluxe Switch. I hope it's switch. the Super Switch. The Super Switch is my vote. Super Switch Entertainment I, System. I think that'd be cool. <laughs> uh, so what is your favorite? This isn't all of the boxed variants you have, but just of what you have up here for display, what's maybe your favorite Switch console? As far as design goes, I like the ones that have a custom dock, Joy-Con, mm -hmm. and uh, Switch itself. I really, really like, this is a newer one, but I love the design on that OLED. I, I think that might be... That's such a good, and then the, the Pokemon one is awesome yeah. too. I have the Pokemon one, but I, I still think the the Tears of the Kingdom one might it's a great be the design, best. Man. It's so cool. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty common, but still very, very cool. And then we have, this is kind of the miscellaneous section, but Wii U, you can't forget about Wii U. It was what, they were trying, they were trying to be the Switch. They just didn't quite get there. Therefore, there weren't very many sales on that, but I have a, you know, probably 70% of the games. I believe there's 130 ish is that correct I it's around the 100 think it's mark more than that is it more than that 180 yeah it's been a while since i've looked but okay yeah we'll have to maybe pop it up on the screen here brother dave let us know um and then we have some playstation down here games that stick out to me here so spyro got the collector's edition i love year of the dragon i played all those games 100 percent at all of them and did it again on, on the switch when the reignited trilogy came out can't recommend them enough and then an interesting one right now is NCAA Football 14, which they are making a new one. That's that's super hype. I'm excited it's for that. It's very exciting. So with the NAL stuff, a new one is coming out literally like is it this 10 year? years later. Yeah. 10, 11 years later. So, but this game is great, which we, we play it with friends quite a lot, 2v2. Again, the community mm -hmm. of gaming is a big part of it for me. As we come over here, N64s, which I'm going for every boxed N64. The only one I'm missing is watermelon. Somehow that one has eluded me mm -hmm. in the box. Now I have, I actually have some Japanese systems as well. And I do have the Japanese watermelon, but I'm looking for a good deal on watermelon. Every time I see it, the person's like, yeah, it's used, but I'd like $3,000 for it. I'm like, <laughs> ooh, yeah. Can't do that. Um, so I'm looking for a deal. I'm not looking to, you know, just market value. I'll pay that. And then we have some game cubes, which we have some overflow game cubes here. This one is actually like brand new. This is a great box that I just recently added. Shout out to Rachel if you're watching this video. More boxes up here. So there are some that I'm missing, but this is a pretty good start. And then there is one out there that we'll get to. Oh that's, yes. That's my personal favorite. I don't know what your personal favorite out of these is. 
I, I love it when they have the full on design, but as far as design goes on the box, it's this. But then we have the Super Nintendo, which there's some stuff I gotta point out. This collection has grown a little bit as far as really high end complete games go. Uh, check out the last video. Yes, <laughs> uh, do that. A lot of those ended up in my collection. I'll just point out a couple, but Mega Man X3 Man. is a massive one. Metal Warriors, so I had a cartridge for that, but upgraded to complete in box. Absolutely massive as well. Even seven and soccer, I don't think you had. Complete. Oh yeah, yep, I didn't have soccer, I did not have X2, and I did not have seven. Those are all additions. There's more littered throughout, but two extremely notable ones um, are Pocky and Rocky 2, which this is a great game that I played with an old friend. It's just a good, a good classic co-op game, a good time, and uh, it's very rare, like. Is, I don't even... So is it... So you got... I think you purchased Pocky and Rocky 1 and 2 from him. Yep. Is that correct? And exactly. is that what got, like, collecting really started, it is started for 100%. you? It is 100%. Pocky and Rocky 1 and 2 were, like, two of the first games that blew my mind as far as collector collectible value go. And I had no idea they were worth anything. Looked them up. I'm like, holy cow, this was probably... 12 years ago, 15 years ago at this point. And that just got the excitement for me going with like building a collection. Another one is Sunset Riders, which uh, Brother Dave and I ha had a good time co-op in this one. Very fun game. It just continues with the theme of, of community and the memories that are attached to it. So from, from what I'm gathering from the collection so far, your style of collecting isn't necessarily completing. What What is it? Correct, yeah. I, I like collecting things either that I play, that I have memories attached to, or that are rare and I think are cool. If they don't fit those boxes, I'm not usually going to collect it. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually consolidated some of those things that have not fit those boxes. So, like, what about these two right here? Where, where, does, where do these uh, fall in oh, the Oh, yeah, uh, you, could just, you could just throw those away. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know how those got there. I don't know either. Just kidding. Uh, love Retro Rick, and I... Did we? So, I, that came in a random collection. Okay, so we actually we got this in a collection. I don't know. It's Punch Out. It's, it's punch originally out. Punch Out with yeah. a retro Rick label over it, and so, I love it. So we just kept it because it was funny. Rick's a great guy with a great channel. So. We're gonna see him this weekend. Yes, very, yeah. very excited. Uh, definitely subscribe. Um, one to help us pass the Detroit Lions and subscribers. To us or Retro Rick? Hmm? No. Who? Help it. Well, well, but we're gonna subscribe see, to see, us. Subscribe to us or so Retro can, Rick. Don't subscribe to Rick. All right, all right. <laughs> you said it right after we were talking about it. <laughs> but we're going to see him. But subscribe because we're going to see him this weekend. Uh, so the next video you guys will see will be yeah, hopefully true. us beating him up for some games. Yeah, that'd be great. Then we have Super N or, uh, N64 down here, which Sky Guy, this piece. Oh, yeah. It's still, it's going to be one of my all-time favorites because of how you made this thing happen. You want to explain the story on that one? So we were at a game convention where uh, the voice of Mario himself Charles was Martinet. Charles Martinet, Martinet, however you want to say it. <laughs> uh, he was there and they were closing up the entire convention and he was leaving. And I was like, we need to get a copy signed. So we're looking around for Super Mario 64. Chase and I split up. And the only one I find is a not for resale edition that somebody Much wanted. Much more rare variant. Yeah. yeah, and somebody wanted like 300 bucks for it and haggled a little bit super super quick and the guy was like okay deal but you got to take me with you to go see him <laughs> so we both so we both ran over there we were the last people that he saw and he signed it for us he goes the number of games i've <laughs> i've signed of this today i said but have you signed one of these and he said i don't think so, so there you go it's it's a super cool you got superstar woohoo and, and, and the thing is, Mario. with that, I didn't know that Sky Guy did this. Yes. I found my copy too late. He was already gone, and I was disappointed that we didn't pull it off. So this was like an epic surprise yeah. and his, his it legendary so moment. And then this one. So this is WWF No Mercy. And the key with this one is on the bottom it says USA-1. Instead of just USA, which this we found out is i'll, I'll tell the beginning and you tell some more yep. details but this is a version that the original release of the game had a, a little bit of a glitch with it so you could send in for a replacement from thq and it would take about two months for them to send it back so some some people would get back a copy instead of just saying usa it'd say usa-1 which is a patch version some people would get like a sealed copy like back, like in the box. Maybe you had to send it in the box to get one back sealed. Then some people, uh, reading some forum posts, said that they sent theirs in and got 
got back their same version, but it was patched, so not a USA-1. So you wouldn't even know it's a USA-1. Yeah, so... The, it's the, incredibly rare. Yes. Yeah, like, who knows how many of these exist, but it is not a lot. No, it's 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 not. There was, like, one, one recent, or not even recent, it was 12 years ago, a THQ employee found a small case of them with, like, 40 and, and sold them, and then that's how people came to know about it to that they with. existed yeah wow. uh, and then gamecube which i still declare as my favorite system of all time though i'm not sure if switch is going to take that title officially but gamecube is just glorious uh, some of the games that i really really love there's a lot fire emblem which is right here fire emblem path of radiance absolutely great played this game like when it was released one of those rare times where you know i got the game that has like a kind of a cult following you and played, played it before it. it was cool man played it before it was cool you know and got it for my brother for his birthday for 20 bucks on ebay like 15 years ago it's probably 200 plus that's now. a little more than that now and complete, <laughs> yeah complete so just an absolutely great game and then super smash bros melee which all time so many hours into this thing it's in the console now <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's not even the case because my kids play it. They're four, and uh, they have no idea how to play, but they still really enjoy it and have a great time with it. It brings them together, man. What, what would up. you say is the most unique piece that you have here, or maybe one that's associated with a cool, cool find? There are some very rare things that we're just <laughs> skimming over. Um, I don't have my original copy of Dis Disney Sports Basketball anymore, but I did find that the original one for a quarter at a garage sale. Uh, you can put up the price charting of that because that's crazy. Uh, one that's that I think is unique is like this guy, the Metroid slash Wind Waker combo. The only difference in that it's a double case and it's a it's a dual cover art. So this cover art is very expensive. If you it's do expensive the math. paper. I think it's six hundred dollar paper. <laughs> it's um, it's uh, something like that. It's very expensive. That's that's an interesting collectible. Sometimes collectors care about things that maybe uh are as important in your mind or my mind that might be one of those examples but there's other collectibles that i'm like yep i get it mm -hmm. and some of those are out here yeah you want to get right to it i want to get into the pokemon room so much has happened here this has been an absolute chaotic disaster for so long because we didn't know how to display the cards and how to really like bring this together um, so this side that's going to be one of the biggest things you notice so if you start from the very top left you have a base set which this base set is only first edition or shadowless cards there's no unlimited and there's three prints of that and first edition shadowless is way more rare than unlimited will you put those up there or keep them in a binder <laughs> the the first edition shadowless yes uh they're up there oh they are there's a lot of first editions alakazam's first edition chancy is charizard is not Man. unfortunately uh, hopefully I can uh, find a good one someday. But then you go on over, like there's a jungle complete set. And then next to that is Fossil. These are all in the order that they released. So Fossil's next, and then Team Rocket is next. And there's a lot of first editions mixed into all of those. And then it goes down, down to Gym Challenge, which is like a 132 card set, massive. And then Gym Heroes, which has the Blaine's Charizard and a lot of iconic hollows. So all, the, all those are complete, they're on display, they're vintage. I still have to work on completing the, the Neo sets, which there's four of, Neo Revelation, Genesis, and the like. Discovery, and, Destiny. And Destiny, yep. And then I do have um, a complete set of Black Star promos in here, which are going to be displayed. But these are all the vintage Black Star promos. So a question you've gotten a lot is, will you, do you like doing graded sets or would you ever consider getting a graded set? I, I maybe, but with how these are displaying like this, I'm, I'm enjoying that. And right now mm -hmm. that's going to be my focus is to complete them ungraded though. I do have some graded stuff. We do have too. ways to display them like this though. Yeah. These yeah. Are, so those are on the website too though. Yeah. So these are PSA slab mounts. slab mounts. We have them for PSA and SGC and maybe CGC. They sell out quick. So I don't know how many we have go over to the website. That's and true. And, and the, the nice out. thing is they can stand up on shelves too. If you don't want to get yep. them on the wall, but this Come is to... literally on a slanted ceiling. That's how good we feel about it. You've got like a PSA 9 Gold Star Charizard. <laughs> we have a five or six thousand dollar card up there in it. Yeah, I don't know what it goes for anymore, but that's I'll, a crazy, I'll find crazy out. one. Because I've got that in a trade for a PS5. That was. And it was behind a base set Charizard. 
We so we caught that on video, man. That's that, one of the craziest things that's ever happened. So that was during the transition, brother Dave, when you left, and then yeah. I was coming on in the and, basement. Yep, and we were both like, we both knew the grade, and Chase didn't. He said, oh, man. "If it's like in eight, I'll consider keeping it an eight or above." But your prediction was a five for the grade. <laughs> and they got, <laughs> they got, got a nine. nine. Unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. And then a recent grade is this Lucky Stadium card in a PSA 9. That's a Black Star promo. Very rare New York Center exclusive. Um, and that's a that's a huge card in a 9. Also, note, I'm not just a poser. This is me as a kid with my dangly glasses. Always at the bottom of my nose. <laughs> Charizard shirt right there. Then pulled a Dragonite. Pumped about it. That's nuts. Pokemon is it's just always been... A big part of my childhood, a big part of my life, which kind of explains uh, this room. But these are another addition, which we got these shadow boxes. These shirts are from our Pokemon, former Pokemon staff friend, Pokemon Derek. He's a legend and uh, hooked us up with some amazing deals on these shirts, and they're beautifully displayed now. We've got some of the Hawaii ones over here, um, the Machamp shirt, and then a random GameCube shirt, but I really like that one, so I wanted to have that. And then we have a few Caterpies. Peeking, peeking out there. <laughs> yeah. Guys, uh, the reason we like Caterpie and we call you the Caterpie crew is because that's the acronym for Chase After the Right Price, C-A-T-R-P. That's why it says it on the shirts. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> it's shocking the amount of comments we get. I was today years old when I found out that Caterpie was Chase After the Right Price. <laughs> <laughs> we understand that it's confusing, but yeah, th there you go. You heard it here, now you know. Uh, also, uh, only listing on a Gold Star Charizard is 5,000 right now. The difference between right. a nine and a ten is fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> Why couldn't I have gotten a ten? I'm know. just kidding. You I'm very it? happy with the nine. <laughs> yes, I would have for sure. Now the games, miscellaneous stuff over here on the left with, with a lot of those staff hats as well, which I think we're going to display these differently under those sets in the future, so we can have more room for the games. But I do have pretty much all the games. So big, big recent addition is Pokemon box, complete with the outer box. That's huge. Um, got that in a collection. And then I have a lot, of, like all the Game Boy ones are complete in box. Pokemon Crystal being the first one that I played. It's the GOAT. I still can love that game. 16 badges, you can't beat it. Uh, just unbelievable. Pokemon's special to like everybody here. That's one of the, yeah. that's one of the cool things. The like we all in have a shared way. passion for Pokemon, whether it's more recent or not. Yep. So it's it's Except fun getting Elko. to, yeah. We're, yeah that's we're, true. We're working on him. Okay, we're guys. working on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's cool. The uh, Kyogre Pokemon Center boxed system is crazy. We actually just recently got the Groudon. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Uh, However you want to say. It's funny. It. As I can't. I said Groudon as a kid, mm -hmm. and I can't say it another way. It's well, because it's to. like soup. You don't say soup. <laughs> that's so, how I saw it, right? I don't know. I don't know if I was right. So but. We, you need that one complete in box. There's yeah. also a Rayquaza one or Rayquaza, however you want to say There's that. There's a couple that I don't have. And they're those things are variety. just yeah. expensive. Yeah. So so I'm targeting those, and then as far as games go, I'm I'm still targeting. So I have the Heart Gold figure bundle. I want the Soul Silver, and then the which is like the same but Soul Silver, and then Platinum, which is a little different, but it does have a figure bundle version. Mm -hmm. And there's that GameCube you talked about. Yes, that I think that's my favorite GameCube. Got that from Ty at a game convention, Southeast Game Exchange. That was He hooked it up, cool. it's minty. It's minty in there. Beautiful, beautiful condition. As far as Pokemon stuff goes, since you have, I think you're only missing like one game for maybe the Wii U. Yeah, like and a random And then you have every single Pokemon game. Mm -hmm. uh, minus maybe variants. Like, you want to talk about these? Those little guys? Oh yeah, there's these guys, the, the um, distribution only DS cartridges. I'm, I am missing some of those, so I'll definitely want to complete that set. There's one that's particularly rare, which will be tough. And yes. I, I'll be looking for those. Uh, and then always condition upgrades, which I swap out all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's so like that's you have a sealed thing. sapphire that's in okay condition. Would you consider swapping that out for a really good complete? Or will you only want a really, really good sealed or maybe a graded one? As long as I have it used somewhere, which I do have a loose cartridge of that, mm -hmm. I think it's cool to have a sealed version, so I'd stick yeah. with that for display. Cool. But I still have one to play. One to display, one to play. <sighs> yeah. And then also, <laughs> real quick, 
Uh, Shout out to Twisted on this. Yeah, this is, uh, an e you got these from E3 in 2003, maybe? Yeah, what, Two, the, it, early, know. early, but it's hard, uh, no, sorry, gold and silver. Yeah, the OG. It's two-sided. Two Such and a this cool one, coin. I think it's, yeah, it is It is open, but that thing's super cool. Uh, that's an expensive coin right there. Yeah, and it's a super cool piece, and he sent it to us, and it's incredibly kind of my man. Um, all right. So cards, now cards is like ever expansive. You can go for a PSA 10 set of every set. You know, like you can go for- for $20 million on yeah, eBay. It's just, it's just crazy where you can go with this. So as far as what I'm like still really honing in on, I want to get at least one of every pack, especially from Wizards of the Coast era. Mm -hmm. um, so that's vintage, like 1999 to 2003, four. Um, and then same thing with theme decks, which we've actually made a huge dent, you might notice, on theme decks. We have almost all of them from the uh, vintage era, which I'm excited about. And then the other thing that I've really targeted quite a lot is Elite Trainer Boxes, uh, which I have quite, quite a good bit of. There's Pokemon Center versions, and then the original versions, and a lot of them we have. There's random ones that we're missing, and then some of the really expensive early ones we're missing. I think missing. they're still like in the ballpark of like 15 to 20 that we're missing. Yeah. Including the, the very first couple ETBs came out in 2013, I believe, yep, or 2012, like 13. And I don't know if you want that one new or complete, but it's it, it'll be about I mean, five to six thousand dollars from know, what yeah. I remember. Yeah. So and, and most of this Pokemon collection has been built up using profits from the Pokemon Pursuit. So that's that's how I built the collection in here. We've shown that on video. That's also how I built the collection, the retro game collection in there, just always like using profits, buying things, selling some, keeping some. It grows over time. I don't know about you guys, but that's the only way that I can justify having a collections like this. Not even justify, I couldn't do it, I'd be broke. <laughs> I'd be <laughs> yeah. broke as a joke. So uh, that's how I built it from, from day one since starting from over 10, 10 years ago and mm -hmm. it's been quite the journey. Another question you get: Do you want to or do you want to get a complete set of booster boxes? That's when you really start talking. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it's on my mind for sure. But the vintage booster boxes are very expensive. There's no great like authenticator for them still. That's a problem. I, the I industry agree. needs to to fix that, and then especially if you're spending. 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars or more on, in some cases. Yeah, yeah. On, on boxes. It's crazy. So yeah, I'm casually like if I get a good deal, I'll pick them up. But really, like right now, if I was gonna say one thing for Pokemon Pursuit, like the the crazy goal would be like a PSA nine or better first edition Shadowless. Yeah. Base set Charizard. Which I think a PSA nine might be around the twenty thousand. I think it's market. around there, give or take. So and we. Then a, a 10 is six that's, figures. That's another time. story, that's another story, yeah. I definitely would need to build up quite a lot of profits to, to make that happen, but that's kind of like the grail, the dream card. We'll see if we can make it happen. Stay tuned uh, to see if we do, because we, we have some game conventions videos coming up around the corner. I'm super, super excited for it. Yeah, not to mention garage sale season. People yeah, maybe. It is, mm -hmm. it is here. We got some stuff cooking, guys, so please subscribe, go to Caterpie Crew. Dot com. We'll have that link below if you want to check out the sweaters, the hats, the mounts, anything you saw in this video. And we will see you on the next one. Peace. Subscribe to Pass the Lions. <laughs> <laughs>